Yeah. All right, welcome back. Um, so don't panic. Nobody intends to gag the media. That's a message that has come uh, from President Uhuru Kenyatta and, of course, his deputy, uh, William Ruto. This, of course, uh, comes uh, in relation to the Kenya Information Communication Bill 2013 that has been termed as draconian and uh, basically taking the country back to the old duck days. So far, the president has uh, uh, said that he would engage uh, with various media stakeholders in looking at the contentious sections before signing the proposed law. Now, today we just want to understand uh, the Kenya Information and Communication Bill 2013. And of course, we'll also be looking at the, some of the amendments to the Media Council Bill. Now, to tell us more about that is uh, Professor Murej Makochian. Uh, who is a uh, member of the Media Complaints Commission. Welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Thank you very much. All right, so perhaps mm. you could, uh, let's begin by understanding what you do as a member yeah. of the uh, Media Complaints Commission, part of the Media Council of Kenya. Yeah, let, let me start even, uh, you know, before that, uh, you know, principally I'm an academic. I'm a media scholar. Uh, currently, I work at Multimedia University of Kenya as a, a professor of media and communication. And I think it was because of that basis that I was appointed to the uh, Media Complaints Commission, which falls under the Media Council of Kenya as by law, but which operates independently you know, of that. And now the Media Act 2009 established the Media Council of Kenya, and uh, under it, the Media Complaints uh, Commission. And basically, in brief, what the Complaints Commission does is to arbitrate and resolve conflict that arises between uh, either the government and the media, uh, you know, the public and the media, and also between media you know, houses. And essentially what we do is that uh, we are required by law uh, to, re to receive complaints from uh, Kenyans, individuals, uh, other citizens, uh, but also from uh, organizations. They could be media organizations, but also from, uh, from, uh, you know, from public figures. Uh, so that any individual that is aggrieved by what the media does, but more importantly also, what is done against the media to curtail media freedom, um, is given the opportunity to come before us and lodge a complaint. And once we have received a complaint, we then go through the process uh, of determining, you know, uh, that complaint. And, and therefore, our role is really, you know, uh, to be a mediator, you know, between the media and the Kenyan public. Do you think you're failed? I'm asking this question because the draconian law that is being now discussed in Parliament, that yeah. we suppose we're waiting the president's um, mm. assent, it, 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 it seems like um, members of uh, parliament, and maybe some Kenyans, are not satisfied with the way the media is treated when they fall off. Mm -hmm. Do you think your complaints commission is, is, is can do that? What needs to be done? It cannot only do that, but it's actually done that. You know, I mean, Kenyans know, and those who don't know, you know, for instance, that uh, the current president, you know, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, actually appeared before the Complaints Commission. Not just once, you know, twice. So many prominent figures appeared before the P Complaints Commission. In fact, when the Complaints Commission was in set, way, you know, around about two, four, five years ago, even the former First Lady, Lucy Kibaki, appeared before the Complaints Commission. You know, so I think we've done a good job, and we can do it. And you see, g going back to the introductory remarks, you know, where our leaders are telling us not to fear, I think Kenyans have got every reason to fear. E Kenyans have got every reason to fear, because the media has played such an important role in this country in bringing us where we are, as far as the democratic space is concerned, that if we have a parliament that can go ahead and come with such amendments, and they are there in black and white. If you go to the parliamentary website, the order paper of Thursday, 
31st you know, of October, actually give the details of what they were talking about. But this did not just come as a by the way. There was a process, a very long process of consultation, of interaction, where different stakeholders were involved. The parliamentary committee was involved. Parliamentarians were involved. We were spoken to them. There's been this kind of ongoing consultation so that at the end of the day, when you get that kind of ambush, you've got every reason to be scared. You know, wh one statement that has uh, been uh, flying around is, yes, media has freedom, but it has also an equal uh, measure of responsibility. So yes. you get a feeling that uh, perhaps the media has been abusing its responsibility or freedom. I mean, it depends on where you, you, you are. And I think it will be foolhardy for anybody to come and take a position that the media as an institution, unlike any other institution, has dis discharged its responsibilities without certain transgressions. You see, but you see, before you go there, you've got to ask yourself, what is the role of the media in society? Why do we take the media the way we take the media? Why is the Kenyan populace, even when they complain, in fact, Kenya, the Ken Kenyans actually complain about, about the media, but when you rank societal institutions in this country, the media has constantly been ranked very high. Why is it so? Because the people, and you, you have listened to very many public figures speak, especially those who are not politicians, over the last two years, I mean two weeks, and I think invariably everybody is saying, look here, we trust the media because they are a voice for us. They defend us. And therefore, if there are any transgressions, they must be taken in that light. And in fact, the law is very clear. The constitution is very clear, spelling very clearly the kind of transgressions that it cannot allow the media to go, to, to go away with. But there are certain mechanisms for dealing with those transgressions. Those mechanisms, in my view, as an individual Kenyan, a citizen, but also as a media academic and a member of a complaints commission, does not include the kind of fines, for instance, that the MPs were trying to sneak into the, into the act. They don't include that. And why do I say that? I say that because much as we, you know, part of the problem is that, uh, and then I'm, I'm going to come back to this, because there are certain provisions in the law which I think every sensible Kenyan would feel compelled to actually defend. And therefore, when we talk about parliamentarians and MPs, we're not talking as if there are people who cannot come up with constructive legislation. A lot of what is in the bill is actually very good. We can discuss the controversies. But the issue here is, when you start addressing the media from the point of view that is seen as you're trying to punish, come up with the kind of uh, uh, penalties that any sensible person can see can actually, in a day or in an hour, kill some of the media, then every person has got to be scared. So the issue here is the extent, the magnitude of the kind of penalties that, that we've seen were sneaked into the bill on the 31st of uh, October. So when, what, what motivates um, members of parliament to have that feeling? I mean, um, in your, in your I, I mean, Why is it so? Is, Why is it being so punitive? It's is, is historical. You know, uh, in my view, politicians will always be politicians. Uh, and this is not new. If you go to the history of the Kenyan media, you'll discover that even in the 80s, yeah. I mean, there were characterizations of journalists of having been born, you know, by bastards born out yeah, of we went through that. whatever. Yeah, mm. out of that, yeah. by the wayside. Mm. There are some unprintable ones that have been, you know, you know, made against journalists. The reason as to why is that power, political power by its very nature, by its very nature, has got tendencies to be dictatorial, where criticism is usually taken negatively. 
so that if I'm in power, any ideas, any information, any views that may erode my standing in society, however justified, is something that I may wish not to accept to be published. And therefore, if you look at the media debate, and I'm not siding with the media, you know, for instance, the debate around MPs' salaries, for instance, a huge debate in this particular country, and rightly so. The characterization by civil society, you know, of parliamentarians, you know, as pigs, they never quite MPs, liked it. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and not just MPs, there are some Kenyans also who never quite liked the accent that the media, you know, uh, uh, went. And it may be personalized, you know, for some of them, that, hey, look here. I'm a member of parliament, I'm a Mheshimiwa. How do you then start describing me, as for instance, MP. as a pig? You know, they, they take but, offense but, but, to but that. But do these members of parliament realize that one time or the other, they will be out of parliament and needing the same press for themselves to be heard? I, I think they... To this, to this I, I, you or know do you think they will be permanent in parliament? The, that question, the, the, the MPs themselves can, you know, you know, you know, can answer. But I think the question makes us wonder, mm. as Kenyans, mm. how is it that somebody who, when they were in the trenches, were beholden to the media, they were really buddies. Yeah. They find themselves in parliament, and all of a sudden, <laughs> they, change they come up with this kind of legislation. Mm. And, and, and for me, wh what I would, I would wish in this show to highlight mm -hmm. is when we go to the Constitution, and we look at the uh, Kenya Information and Communication Amendment Bill, and we look at the Media Council Bill, I think the debate should actually be centered there. What are we dealing with? Because a lot of this thing is coming out, but some of the details and the history and the foundation is being lost. If you'll allow me, I'll just mm -hmm. want to make reference to the Constitution. Yeah. The Constitution under Article 33, mm -hmm enshrines the freedom the right of freedom of expression you know for every kenyan and it is defined in detail but then if you go to section 34 section 34 is i think critical for us because it talks about freedom and independence of the media it mentions electronic print and all other types of media and therefore media is looked at collectively when you look at the Kenya Information and Communication Amendment Bill and you look at the uh, Media Council of Kenya Bill, you see that there is a struggle here because now all of a sudden there is a separation of the media where the electronic media is grouped into one under the Kenya Information and Communication mm -hmm. uh, Bill and then the, under the Media Council Bill apparently the print media is being addressed. But originally, Kenyans should understand that the original Media Council of Kenya Amendment Bill 2013 actually had most of what is put under the tribunal, which is established under KIKA, the Kenya Information and Communication. And you see, this trouble comes because of 34, because mm -hmm. 34 enshrines, mm -hmm. secures, establishes freedom and independence of electronic print and all other types of media i've read in the blog sphere those who are in the blog sphere are wondering now could we ourselves be <laughs> a target but yeah, of the constitution does yeah. actually protect them because it talks about all other types of media guaranteed Though, of course, with the exception of Article 33, 2, which talks about propaganda for war and all that. But then, under subsection 2 of Article 34, it states, and I will read, the state shall not, it says, the state shall, shall not. not, A, exercise control over or interfere with any person engaged in broadcasting the production or circulation of any publication or dissemination of information by any medium, all media is included. This the state is debarred mm -hmm. from controlling. So actually, what we are saying is that that amendment, that bill being debated, is mm -hmm. out of question. 
No, no, I mean, it's, it's very obvious. Uh, yeah. You are not a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer, but it when is, you read this, it is very, it is very clear. It is very clear. Be, 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 before you intervene, let me just read yes. subsection B of the same. It says, the state shall not, not. penalize mm. any person for any opinion or view or the content of any broadcast publication or dissemination. Mm. Very much resonating with the First Amendment in the U.S., mm -hmm. where the government is debarred from interfering mm. with the freedom of the media. But you see, why I make reference to the Constitution, when you look at the Kika Bill, and you look at the Media Council Bill, which is coming for debate probably uh, you know, uh, uh, tomorrow, it says under subsection 3 that the broadcasting and electronic media have freedom of establishment. And of course, my interpretation here may be uh, you know, weak, but establishment is founding. Mm. Freedom of establishment subject only to licensing procedures. This is the Constitution. Mm. It says broadcasting and other electronic media have freedom of establishment subject only to licensing procedures that are necessary to regulate the airwaves. Now, when you look at the Kika bill, most of this mm. is talking about the electronic media. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, under that bill, you find the issue of regulation being sneaked in. Mm. You see, because this clause of the Constitution, 34, is empowering Parliament to establish a body, a body, one single body, that is going to do the kind of work that the Media Council is currently doing, and doing it very, very well.